Recently, I was going through an interview process for a side consulting project I wanted to pick up. This interview process required collaborating with others on a small scale project. For it, I had to utilize Git via GitHub to collaborate with some of the members of the interview team and then show my final deliverable. I eventually found out that I was hired for the project and when I solicited feedback, I found out they actually encompass many data analysts that don't know how to use Git. With this video, I'm hoping you're better informed to use Git in your future projects. What up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel is all about tech and skills for data science. And in this video today, we're going to be going over Git and also GitHub and how this can be used in your role as a data analyst in data science. Git in general can be a very overwhelming topic for some somebody new to this. So for this, we're going to be just focusing on the core basics to get you started. As many of y'all are working on capstone projects from things like the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate or just a project in general, I wanted to showcase a manner that you can be displaying this portfolio online. With this newfound skill set of Git, I'm hoping that you are better set up for success so you can do like I did and collaborate with other teams on data science projects. So let's get started first with understanding what is Git and how GitHub fits into this whole thing. Git is a version control system. So if you've ever used something like Google Docs or Microsoft Word where you can track changes, it's a very similar concept in that it's tracking the changes to a specific file. But instead of only tracking changes in one single file, it does this across an entire folder structure. So you can have multiple different files you're working on, such as Python or R, that it's tracking the changes in. It even goes as far to track overall changes in the folder structure or the addition and removal of different files from those folders. All these changes are recorded in what's called a Git repository, which is a hidden file inside of your main folder. So you're probably asking yourself, why do we need to track these changes? When you're working in teams and everybody's working on their own machine with their different portions of the code, whenever you go to bring back this code together, you need to have a method that tracks all these different revisions so that way you can seamlessly integrate these changes together. So how does GitHub fit into all of this? Git itself is a software that you install and then it is used within your folder structure to track those changes. GitHub is an online platform where you can actually take your files and folders and that Git repository and host it online so that way others can access it and you can collaborate with others. When used in this manner, GitHub is called the central or remote repository, and this is where the source of truth is for your files resides. One can then pull this central repository into their local repository and work on the code or whatever it may be. Once your changes are done, you would then push this back to the central repository to update those changes. For a single person project, this may seem a little bit overkill to host on GitHub, but it's actually good because now you have a location that you can share your portfolio. But even more of a benefit of GitHub is the fact that whenever you start collaborate on teams, it provides a method to have a central repository so multiple members can access and work on code at the same time. To show this benefit, let's say you're working on a team-based project, and for this, the central repository itself is located on GitHub, and you want to make changes to this project. So for this, you have the central repository, and you pull that repository onto your local machine, so you have your own local copy, and you begin making changes to the project itself. Now, because of these changes, you have two different repositories. Let's say during this time, also, a second coworker decides they want to make changes to this, project, they also pull it and begin making changes. Now we have three completely different repositories. Now let's say you're wrapping up with your changes. From there, you can then push your changes up to that central repository. And from there, you'll integrate those changes together and the central repository will be updated for those changes. Now when the other coworker goes to update their changes to the central repository, it's going to now have that version that you modified, but because we had this version control system, we'll be able to easily integrate these different changes and we'll have this new updated central repository with all of the changes. 
So that's the benefit of having the central repository. And the most popular option that I'm recommending here is GitHub uh, that was actually recently acquired by Microsoft a few years ago because it's so popular. But there are a number of other options that you can check out, such as uh, Bitbucket, GitLab, and also SourceForge. Okay, let's actually go into an example use case of using Git and also GitHub. For this, let's say you have some sort of project that you want to host on GitHub. So for this example here, we're gonna be using, I had a recent video on, I uh, used a Python file to collect data and count the number of mountain bike jumps I had. I have that project right here. We are gonna go through the process of initiating Git and then also hosting it to the repository on GitHub. Here we are on my local machine, and here is the folder itself titled Mountain Bike Project, and it has all the different files and folders within it that are part of the project itself, which is just a, a Jupyter notebook and then some data and some different charts. So for this, I want to initiate Git to start tracking the changes within this project. For this, I want to open a command line at this folder itself. And so for, if you're on a Windows machine, you're gonna be using a PowerShell or command prompt. For this uh, Mac, you can either use terminal or you can use iTerm2. So I'm gonna have a iTerm2 window open up. Okay, so don't be intimidated with the command line. It's definitely a skill you need to learn and be familiar with. But all it is is now we are inside of the command line located at the folder itself. So if I were to show the contents of this folder, I would type uh, ls and I can see all the different contents right here that match up uh, what are in the folder itself. So now we want to use Git itself and to actually see if you have this software of Git installed, if you're on a Mac, you're just gonna type git tac tac and then version. And if you don't have Git installed on your Mac, it will automatically install it. But if you do, it will tell the version. If you're on a Windows machine, I'll include a link below, and that's how you're gonna go about installing Git on your Windows machine. Okay, so we have Git installed. So I'm going to make a call to Git, which is the command is Git itself. And then from there, I'm gonna say Git init, and that's going to initialize this project itself and start that Git repository. So it initialized this empty Git repository. And as you can see, um, inside this mountain bike project folder, we now have this hidden file, which you can see is sort of grayed out on my Mac. And that is a hidden file shorter, and that's what's actually tracking those changes. So now it's gonna start tracking these changes. With any project itself, you're gonna need a readme file, which is a markdown file. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create that real quick. We want to start tracking all the different changes we've had made within this folder itself. So we're gonna run a git add function. So we'll do git add, and then I'll do this uh, tac a, and this just says add all these different files to the staging area. Okay, they're now added. Now we need to actually commit these changes or actually update it within our Git repository that this is what the changes we want to be. So from here, we're gonna run git commit. And we're also going to include a message on what we're doing. So this is the initial commit. So as you can see, hey, it has eight files within this uh, folder right here, and it's going to, it committed all these different changes to it. So our local project and the Git repository is up to date for all of our recent changes. So now, right, we have all of these changes, they're done. We're tracking it via Git on our local computer. We want to get it to GitHub, so that way we can display it to the world. So go to your favorite browser, and if you don't have a GitHub account already, go in and sign up for it. Now, once you have your account set up, you can now go in and you're gonna create that repository on GitHub itself, so that way you can now store your files on. In order to create this repository, go to your local page, and from there, navigate to the repositories, and then you want to create a new repository. And from there, you'll name it. Um, public because you want it to be uh, seen by everybody and then don't worry about checking any of these different uh, items right now. And then from there we'll create repository. Okay, so now we now have this empty repository on GitHub itself. And what it's saying now is, hey, you can either create a new repository or you can come in and push an existing repository, which we have in our case. So you can actually just copy all of this code right here. So I'll copy it. And then from here, we'll go back to the command line itself, uh, paste that code in, 
and then press enter. And what has happened now is this has now connected your local machine and the local repository you had to that remote repository, which is located on GitHub. So let's go check it out on GitHub now. So I'll navigate to this repository folder and bam, there is all my stuff. So it has my charts folder, my data folder, my Python file, uh, my readme, I had updated it further for different information but it has all the different files and folders uh, located right here now on GitHub for the world to see. Now that we have our project hosted on GitHub, now what's gonna come up is we need to make changes to this project itself. So let's go over some key ideas and concepts behind Git itself. So whenever we initiated Git using that Git init, all of the files were untracked. And then from there, what we wanted to do, we want to start tracking it within Git. So from there, we use that git add keyword to actually add it to start tracking the changes. And this adds it into the staged area. They are now in an area that we have all of our different files we may want to stage. And we can then from there commit those changes and update our local repository to the most recent revision. Once we have made a commit, that's usually after what follows this is usually you would push. So we did that git push command to actually push our local repository to our remote repository. Now it's coming time, like I said, we're coming to, we wanna make changes to the project itself. When we go in and make changes to any of these files, it's gonna go from that committed zone over to a modified area. Then once we've done making our changes, we can then do that git add to then push it back into that staging area. Once we have everything staged that we want to commit, we can then commit it back to the committed area and then from there push up to GitHub if we want to. Around circular circle with the music, the flow. So let's actually apply this of me wanting to add a file to this project and then update it on the remote repository on GitHub. So the first uh, one command that you need to be very familiar with is git status. And this just tells what is the status of the remote repository. For this, we're on the branch main, uh, which we wanna be, and it's up to date. There's nothing to commit. So there's nothing really here glaring out, it's just saying, hey, everything is normal. From here, I wanna create a new Python file. We'll say it's a uh, hello world uh, Python file, and it's just a, a simple script that prints hello world. So I'm going to create that new file. And we can see that it was uh, created right here. And so now let's go back in and do that git status and see what's happening here. And see we added this file and so now going back to what we previously learned, it's an untracked file. So we need to add this file. So we'll do git add and then we'll do the name of the file itself, hello world.py. Once again, let's run git status to see what's going on. And we can see, hey, we have Hello World is a new file and it's in that staging area. It is uh, changes to be committed. So now let's actually commit those changes. So git commit. So we have these changes. Once again, I'll do git status to see what the status is. And it says, hey, we're still on that branch main, but your branch is ahead of origin main, which is what is on GitHub by one commit. So we have updated work on our local uh, repository that is ahead of that on GitHub. So we need to now push that to GitHub. So I go ahead and type in git push, and bam, we have now pushed that to GitHub. And we can go to GitHub itself, and I will refresh this web page. And right here is our new hello world.py file uh, on GitHub. Bam, so there you have it. That is how you can use Git uh, in your own manner to build a project and then showcase that project to GitHub. And then if you have any changes, how you can actually update your project as well. For those that aren't as familiar with the command line like I went through today, I strongly encourage you to start going through and practicing using this because it's such a good skill to have in order to access and utilize your computer to its maximum capability. So as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.